This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. You really don't want to know. Whoa! He opened his eyes! Oh my gosh! He opened his eyes! I thought his eyes were sewn shut. That looks kind of terrifying and also kind of derpy. The moment... Um... I have sound effects you can redeem with my arty bucks. You can take a look. ユミコの気持ちを変えるために自作自演を行って身の危険を演出することにした。ウープス。ふ、くるファットディスウッエンドバディ。ユミスキしております。ところがどうだ。実際はあなたの飼い犬が危機を演出するどころか、うまい具合
I'm no longer Sakaki's bodyguard. That's a fact, and there isn't a thing I can do about it. However, the girl's clearly in some form of danger. I'm not willing to overlook that, no matter what my employer expects of me. Sakaki's not a stranger to me anymore. Not to say that I've developed feelings of the sort that would entertain our voyeuristic dorm mates. She's a classmate and someone I've spent a lot of time with lately, that's all. But at the very least, I don't intend to just abandon the girl when she needs my help. Anyway, an operation, huh? JB's clearly under a professional obligation not to divulge the details. By making that so clear, however, she gave me crucial grounds for speculation. Most likely, the decision to remove me was made over JB's opposition, but she couldn't provide any information about that either. In other words, people she can't discuss with me are involved in the planning. The strange behavior of the assailants, my sudden dismissal, and this mysterious operation. Every major clue I have suggests this is going to become a huge pain in the ass. For the time being, I guess I'll report into Sakaki. When I give Sakaki the rough outline of the situation, her face fills with a surprisingly clear expression of dismay. It was just decided today. They gave me official notice by the phone, so I'm already off the job. Oh no, but now I can't go outside to get my McDonald's. Sorry about following you around all this time. It was my job, so I didn't have any choice. Think you can forgive me? Sakaki's tone of voice suggests she couldn't care less about that particular detail of the moment. I'm sure you're aware, Sakaki, but just because I've been pulled from this assignment doesn't mean the threat has passed. From now on, you need to be keeping a watchful eye on your surroundings whenever you go out. Constantly monitor everything that's going on within a 30 minute... 30 meter radius for signs of danger. Also, I've been removed from my position as her bodyguard, but they didn't restrict me from lecturing her to prepare for future threats. Not that they would have approved if I'd asked for permission, of course. That's part of the reason I didn't press JB too hard for specific details. So that's the basic outline, but... Sakaki? Sakaki, you need to get... <laughs> you need to get a fox taser. <laughs> that's no good. You really need to listen to me this time, alright? After all, next time something happens, you're going to be the one protecting yourself. I patiently re repeat my self-defense lecture from the top. Not sure if the girl's actually listening this time, but she's certainly got a serious expression on her face. Seems to be thinking something over very intently. That's all I have to say. I finished my explanation. Deciding to wrap this up for a moment, I look straight into Sakaki's eyes and continue. Just get yourself some, like, like some knockout gas and a giant, like, <laughs> gas sprayer and just spray people when they get too close and it'll knock them out. Boom. Easy. From now on, we'll be back to just classmates. She's like, oh no, this is the worst! <laughs> oh no, this is a disaster! <laughs> Sakaki doesn't offer a clear reaction. Far from typical. Deciding not to stretch this out, I turn my back on her and begin to walk toward my room. See ya, friend! <laughs> At a bare minimum, I've told her what to watch out for. She'll probably be on guard for a while, and I'm planning to keep an eye on her from a greater distance than before. Providing coincidental help when necessary. Oh, we're going back to the, the old coincidence excuse. Look, JB, I'm sorry, but I saw someone being attacked. It happened to be near the all-you-can-eat seafood bar, and like, well, I was there, so I mean, obviously I'm going to help out. I didn't know it was you, Miko. That's plausible deniability. In some respects, this should actually make it easier for me to take action compared to when I was specifically acting as a close protection bodyguard. I don't know if JB read this far ahead when she dropped those hints over the phone, but for the moment I think I've reached a respectable compromise solution that doesn't violate the letter of my orders. But my satisfaction proved short-lived. <laughs> Wait! Alright, next time you get in trouble, Yumiko, just scream help and the elite beat agents will come and save you. Just as I'm taking my second step, she calls out to me from behind. Hmm? When I turn back, Sakaki's still facing me. She stands with her legs spread wide, her ha head hanging slightly. Not far enough to hide the intense, anguished expression on her face. Both of her hands are clenched tightly into trembling fists. Ten odd seconds of silence pass before she finally opens her mouth to continue. <laughs> Nick is a pump. Nick's a pumpkin. I don't know. I just it's, it rhymes with lumpkin. Yeah, that I did. She swallows softly, then looks me in the eye. 
And just like that, Sakaki Yumiko's fired right back with a complete surprise of her own. Say what? Taking a page out of a certain shaggy-headed blonde's book, Sakaki repeats herself, clearly enunciating every syllable. She's she's rich, so she can buy, she can buy her own bodyguard. This is about the last thing I was expecting. Didn't Sakaki hate having me following her around all the time? To be sure, she softened up noticeably over the last week or so. When I was lightly wounded in the course of duty as her bodyguard, she even showed some honest concern on my behalf. That said, the girl always had fundamental problems with the nature of my protection. I'd approach this on the assumption that she disapproved of being guarded in the first place. Are you serious? That's fine, I can appreciate that. Under the circumstances, I couldn't help wondering. But anyway, I'm pretty damn expensive. You sure about this? <laughs> I'm the best. <laughs> Perhaps because it's not money she earned herself, Sakaki's tone of voice takes on a hint of self-ridicule. At any rate, it seems perfectly clear that this is no joke. She really means it. Alright then. I'll accept that request. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Compared to a minute before, Sakaki's expression seems to have regained a bit of vigor. Are you, you alright with me approaching this the same way as before? Well, I'd be fundamentally trying to be aware of your movements at all times, even when you're doing things generally regarded as shameful or embarrassing. Just wondering if that's really alright with you. Yeah, you're not following her into the bathroom. Seems like she really has gotten a bit of her spirit back. Back. As you wish, just make sure them paychecks be coming. Immediately after throwing these words in my direction, Sakaki turns away and begins stomping loudly up the stairs. I bet you. Mm. Just predicting? At least one of the other girls overheard this, and are going to be like, Ooh, they like each other, and then we'll do embarrassing and cringy stuff. Probably headed to the rooftop again, at a guess. Judging from the flow of that conversation, I think it'd be best to give her a little time to herself. Oh, uh, why did I- You see? What did I call? I called it. I freaking called it. I know this game too well. For the time being, I suppose we'll resume this afternoon- Hmm? Half of a smirking female face pokes out from around the corner in a clearly deliberate way. <laughs> Amine, are you ever going to pull up your pants and buckle your belt? Amine? <laughs> Were you eavesdropping the whole time? <laughs> All the girls are here. Even Sachi? Maybe it was a coincidence that they were passing by, but I think listening to the entire conversation may have had something to do with their personal curiosity. Well, with the way they kept striking up bizarre conversations about Sakaki the other day, I've got the distinct feeling these people are up to something. Especially Amine. You are not my big sis. And you never will be. You really shouldn't keep playing up your age like that, even as a gag. You'll get wrinkles. Every last one of you was listening in. I've felt some doubts in this regard before, but... Could it be that these people have too much time on their hands? 
Yes! And massively screwed up priorities and brains. I've shared dorms with female colleagues before, but they use their off days studying intensely or throwing themselves into personal training, just like everyone else. By comparison, I can't help thinking these girls suffer from a chronic lack of productive uses for their time. You people think whatever you want. But the fact is, Sakaki's got some very complicated personal circumstances that warrant protection. It's not something you should be laughing. Say what? You're saying the intelligence I've gathered on Sakaki is incomplete? That's highly interesting. The moment I speak those words... Four sets of eyes simultaneously narrow to reproachful slits, overflowing with pure scorn. Wow, you- I gotta say, they got- they have a lot of nerve glaring at me like this. Yuji is an awful, despicable human being, don't get me wrong. But at least in this timeline, they're worse. <laughs> they're the eyes of people who've just lost all respect for someone. Okay, what's with the look? It's good thing I don't care what you think of me. Carrot? True, but I'm pretty sure Makana was talking about playing mini golf. Because they're terrible people who delight in mocking you. Yeesh, that was shrill. I should make a mod of this game where I replace the protagonist with me and just what I would be saying in all of these situations. It would be a much shorter and very different game. Having successfully passed through the storm of frenzied, meaningless excitement, I make my way to back to the lobby alone. <sighs> Singing deeply into the sofa, I think back over my conversation with Sakaki. Sure didn't see that one coming. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around it. I mean, for the first couple of days there, the girl was so furious about being guarded that she dusted off her treasured sword, the legendary box cutter of Wrath. Maybe she just realized that she's in real danger here? When threatened by a mysterious menace, it's only natural to grow uncertain and fearful. At present, I suppose I'm the only means she has to relieve that anxiety, even a little. From that perspective, I guess it's reasonable enough. Sakaki's basically a rational person. I can understand how she'd swallow her pride and make this choice after carefully weighing the alternatives. Whatever the case may be, I now have her approval. That should make it easier to continue protecting her, as I'd planned from the start. No need to look a gift horse in the mouth. This organization's of colorful arty. I would not call it that, no. <laughs> I'd call it the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Since she's hired me, I'll have to earn my salary. Pushing myself up off the sofa, I glance down at my watch. There's still plenty of time before Sakaki will be heading out to draw her pictures. Guess I'll go run for a while. The frets are getting steadily stronger, and I'm not getting back up. That just means I'll have to intensify my training to match. After a light warm-up, I slap my hands together in the entrance, then push my way out the front door at a jog. And today, as usual, our mysterious friends make their appearance. However... Something's clearly different this time. From the moment they spot me, the men seem oddly flustered. Many of them appear to have gotten cold feet. One or two take out cell phones and try to contact someone. I love how it's the exact same CG every time. I mean, it makes perfect sense from a uh, coding standpoint. It's a 
expensive to get these assets, but it, it makes it feel like <laughs> Yumiko's just like so surprised and flustered every single time it appears, and Yuji's just always like, stand back, even though he's making her stand back closer to the guys, and it's all the same guys just like, oh, we're back again! <laughs> Hmm, wonder where they heard such a thing like that. I've got a feeling this might have something to do with JB's evasiveness earlier. Whatever the case, the men take much longer than usual to approach me. <laughs> if the whole game were action scenes like this, it would be one of the best VNs! <laughs> But it's not! <laughs> when they finally managed to spur themselves to action, their strategy was as confused as always. Even more so, really. None of them seemed eager to take the lead. They're so sloppy that you'd think they were trying to fail. Sakaki calls out timidly from behind me, slowly opening her eyes. Yeah, but something was definitely off this time. Sakaki looks up at me with an expression of pure bewilderment. These constant attacks must be causing the girl more than enough worry. Adding their unclear, suspicious motives to the equation would probably only upset her further. Hard to say. It sounded like that might be the case, but there's no way to know if they were trying to mislead us. After brushing off a little dust, I indicate, let's go, with a slight movement of my head. As we slowly climb up the slope leading away from the riverbank, I think long and hard about our enemies. I just can't figure out how. Uh, I just can't figure out their objective. It's obviously connected to Sakaki, but their attacks are far too sloppy for this to be a real kidnapping job. And they f that phrase they used again today: "This isn't what we signed up for." They clearly knew I was taken off the job, which suggests a connection to Ichigaya, my original client in this matter. Just what is this? Still unsatisfied, I clamber up my way to the roof. Across from the setting sun, the world's already grown dark and murky. Something in the air suggests an approaching storm. Might have to take countermeasures before the rain starts to fall in earnest. Oh boy! He's gonna be super mad now. <laughs> He's like, I thought I told you to get that guy off of the bodyguarding job! She's like, I thought I told him to get off the bodyguarding job. <laughs> this guy seems like he, maybe he needs some happy pills. Dude, we, we had to use our Olive Garden gift card before it expired, and they just happened to attack us on our way. Perfectly reasonable. では、この状況を一体どう説明するというのだ。推測ではありますが、風見雄二が由美子さんの護衛を特裁、本人にその旨を伝達したのではないかと思われます。その上で、不安に思った由美子さんから、個人的なものとして、風見雄二に護衛を
He's like, all right, it's, it's okay, Michiaki, just, you know, deep breath, don't let this get to you. Moi. <laughs> and then he immediately gets angry again. <laughs> you need to leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get some people who actually know how to gain up on one bodyguard. Get some guys who actually have real weapons like tasers. I just just knock out the bodyguard and kidnap her. Imagine if my condo neighbors can only hear me saying that and they just heard me say just knock her out and kidnap her. They're like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, they, they, they are going to be bringing the guns this time. <laughs> Thank you, sir! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, dude, if Michiaki hired Shredder, Kyuji wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> we would need four Kawabungas to do that. It's been several days since I came into Sakaki's employ. Strangely enough, they've been largely peaceful. The confused encounter immediately after she hired me was the last time those people tried anything. That doesn't mean they've given up, of course. More likely, they've withdrawn for the moment to prepare a more decisive move. I can afford to be a little less vigilant, but I'm careful not to let my guard down entirely. Come, she still looks so angry. It's a, you're literally paying for me to be here. Can't you at least have not like an I am so unbelievably angry that this is happening <laughs> face on? <laughs> Come to think of it, why are you always wearing the school uniform? That's true. I think the reason, you know, my understanding is that the reason they wanted to do this is because her actual casual outfit is modest, and if they did that, we wouldn't get the upskirt shot in the CG. Because so they added fan service. Mm -hmm. You're on vacation, so normally you'd wear casual clothes every once in a while. I'm just wondering if there was some reason you don't. Dude, you're wearing your school uniform too! <laughs> Yeah, why am I? <laughs> so let me get this straight. You only wear casual clothes when you're inside the school? I Then I guess everyone else in our school is a juvenile delinquent in the making, eh? I see. Sakaki's grown calm enough to humor me with uh, po pointless small talk of this sort. She seems much less tense after several days without violent interruption. Probably because there's no need for constant wariness, the movement of her pencil appears to have grown smoother as well. All of a sudden, her hand stops moving. Well, uh, with a brief exhalation of her breath, she glances over at me out of the corner of her eye. What's wrong? You notice something? Turning her face away at my words, Sakaki curls up her body to forward to over her sketchbook. Her voice is almost small enough to be lost in the wind, but I hear it clearly enough, because I'm a super robot. What was that? Sakaki? She still looks extremely ticked, but less so now. This is suspicious. Well, I mean, a thank you like this from Sakaki of all people? Don't tell me. Is that why nothing's been happening in the last few days? Huh? I see. It all fits. Sakaki's already been kidnapped, and the person sitting in front of me is an imposter. A classic trick, but you just gave yourself away. <laughs> what have you done of Sakaki? If you're not planning to talk, I'm prepared to. Yeah, he's a moron. Sakaki? Is that you after all? <laughs> 
What do you mean by that? I'm only considering every possible scenario, so I can respect to so I can respond to minor abnormalities. <laughs> What are you so angry about? She seemed to be in an unusually good mood just a minute ago, but now she's in full sulk mode. I w yeah, probably because you were just a huge dipwad to her. <laughs> well, you know, I don't consider myself to be have the best social skills, but compared to this lackwit, like I'm good. For all the severe lectures I've received from JB and others regarding the treatment of women, it seems I still have a great deal of room for improvement when it comes to interactions with females in my own age group. Yeah, just a tad. Sighing ruefully, I closed my eyes for a moment. Honestly, if only the sky would give me a little advance warning, I wouldn't get struck by lightning at such random moments. Hmm? A plop of water against my forehead brings me back to reality. I raise my head and look up at the sky. Seriously? At some point, it's filled up with angry gray rain clouds. I noticed it was looking a little overcast, but I hadn't expected such a sudden and dramatic turn for the worse. For a moment, I consider attributing the abrupt storm for to Sakaki's out-of-character remarks disturbing the balance of the universe, but I have the feeling that she wouldn't appreciate the gag. <laughs> oh, this is turning into Beatrix Potter's opening, where she's painting, it starts raining, she has to run back. Sakaki immediately runs to push her art supplies back into her tote bag. But the rain, indifferent to our concerns, rapidly intensifies. <laughs> I like the the rain effect. It, it looks very good. With a slightly archaic expression that reveals her for the avid reader she is, Sakaki accurately forecasts an unfortunate future. Guess there's nothing for it. Let's wait this out over there. I point out to the bridge that stands comparatively nearby. It was just a part of the scenery up until now, but at the moment it's our best option for shelter from the rain. Yeah. Come on, I think it'd best to be, be best to run. Leading Sakaki along the river, I hurry to the bridge as the rain grows steadily stronger. She follows close behind, but with her bag protectively clutched to her chest. <laughs> Having sprinted all out for 200 meters or so, Sakaki's completely out of breath by the time we reach our shelter. You alright? Get your breathing back to normal, then take a seat and rest for a while. <laughs> That's a little darker than her usual works. The area under the bridge quickly falls into shadow. Even the faint light trickling through the cracks in the storm clouds can't reach us through these heavy iron above. Unfortunately, or fortunately, since we're more or less in the country, there isn't much junk littering the area compared to what you'd find in a city. Sometimes an empty bottle or can rolls by on the river, but that's about it. Sakaki and I brush off a light layer of dust from the bare concrete foundation of the bridge, then settle ourselves down to wait out for the storm. As the girl on my side tries her best to wipe the water from her hair with a handkerchief, I examine the state of affairs outside. The streaks of rain have only grown larger and more frequent. There's no sign of it stopping anytime soon. Dude, this rain could last for, like, a day. You might just have to make the mad dash back. Or buy an umbrella. The sky, slightly gray and cloudy only minutes ago, is already a sea of uninterrupted black. In a country town like this, they don't even light the streets properly. The area has already grown dark, as if to exacerbate our unease. And finally, there's that familiar roar. A sound that always seems to accompany summer downpours. Thunder can be a frightening thing. I had colleagues with experience on mountain rescue operations who'd cower nervously every time a storm rolled by. Judging from the sound, it's relatively close. Probably best to not move around too much at the moment. Guess we'll have to kill some time here, Sakaki. Turning to my side, I try to make eye contact. She's like, no! No! I can't have a long time with Yuji! This is the worst! She doesn't meet my gaze. Her throat moves. I can hear a faint gulp. Come to think of it, this girl had an unexpectedly fearful side. Should probably reassure her that it can't strike us here. But just as I'm opening my mouth to speak... Oh. I guess she's one of those people who does not like storms. Oh boy! It's a CG time! Time for the CG! Oof. I love the art in this game. Like, the artists who drew all these CGs and BGs did a really good job. I just hate the storytelling a lot of times. 
Sakaki Yumiko doesn't let other people touch her, and it's completely unthinkable that she'd touch them herself. When the rain falls on her head, she brushes it off. When wind blows in her face, she forces her way stubbornly through it. That's the person I thought she was. And that's why this doesn't quite feel real to me. Especially after those strangely sweet words of thanks from before. It feels like I've stepped into some oddly realistic dream. I see. Seems you really are quite the scaredy cat, Sakaki. I understood quickly enough. It'd be easiest to pretend that was the reason. But the fact of the matter is, it's hard to blame this on her naturally fearful side. Something else seems to have taken hold of the young woman trembling in my arms. Something powerful and difficult to understand. Sakaki. It's still fairly warm out, but her clothes are wet with rain. Only natural that her body temperature would fall. I try to convince myself that that's the only reason Sakaki's trembling, but it doesn't quite work. She finally speaks, raining the words out of her throat. Her voice is frail and utterly weak in a way I never would have thought possible from the Sakaki I know. With that, the last of my strained explanations crumble. This is something new entirely, a side of her I've never seen before. <laughs> Just about the storm or about everything in general? Sakaki's cowering in terror. Even menaced by thugs on a daily basis, even when she couldn't completely hide her fear, she went about her business as usual, but that stubborn, prideful, resolute person seems to have melted away. All that's left is a frightened, trembling little girl, clinging to me like a life preserver. A diesel locomotive passes overhead with a loud, sustained roar. The water that had gathered on top of the bridge rains down to either side. The very air around us seems to shake. But Sakaki doesn't react. She lies on top of my body, completely motionless except for her trembling, and waits for the thunder to pass. Not a problem. I can't bring myself to ask her anything. There was obviously something behind Sakaki's behavior, but it was such a strong reaction that it feels wrong to ask out of mere curiosity. The rain slaps heavily on the bridge above, the wind whistles loudly by outside, sometimes driving water into us from the side. But now that the thunder has passed, Sakaki seems to be gradually regaining her calm. <laughs> Was she struck by lightning as a kid or something? Cuddling close, Sakaki stares up into my eyes. Well, I have a gym membership. I might look strong to you, but I've never thought of myself that way. Hmm. On my own, huh? What is it? Go ahead. If it's just something you want to say, then sure. I told you before, didn't I? If you want to talk, I'm willing to listen. Sakaki nods, and in that small, same small, soft tone, she begins to tell me about herself. <gasps> flashback time? Is it flashback time already? Oh, I hope so. The flashbacks are the best part of the game, by far. The rain shows no sign of letting up. Her quiet voice flows past me and dissolves into the deepening darkness. The weakness of those words seemed to echo the fragility of the little girl in my arms. 